All right, uh, so we've made it to the end of the Screeps tutorial walkthrough. We are on the last step, step number five, defending your room. Uh, thanks for sticking with me this far. And I think in this last step, what they're gonna have us do is create a structure called a tower. And towers are a pretty good defense for your room. They'll shoot any enemy creeps that come in. Uh, but I'm curious to see if they actually have us creating creeps that uh, can attack other creeps and help us defend too. Uh, so we'll see what they do here. So the world of Screeps is not the safest place. Other players uh, will want your territory and the resources inside it mostly. Um, and then also the game will spawn neutral NPC creeps um, from time to time that will try to attack your base. So you do need to have some sort of defense uh, before too long. So in this example, They've got one of these neutral creeps out here uh, trying to attack our base. Uh, right now we've got a wall set up that's preventing that, that creep, that, that baddie who wants to attack us from entering our base and causing havoc. So the first defense they suggest is using safe room. So you have a option to activate safe room on your room um, you can do this a limited number of times in the game, but basically it's a, you know, I messed up or my code can't defend this attack and I need some time to write some more code that can. So you can activate safe mode, get a little bit of time, uh, I think it's a few hours or something, it's pretty generous to uh, write code to, to stage an adequate defense uh, from your attacker. So we'll copy that, activate safe mode from our console to save our room from this attack. So now that we've activated safe mode, the enemy creep is still in our room, uh, but they've faded, which indicates that they can't actually do any damage to our room right now. So it says towers are the easiest way to actively defend a room. Uh, they use energy and they can be targeted at any creep in the room to attack it or heal it. And the effect depends on the distance between the tower and the target. So targets that are closer to your uh, tower, enemies that are closer to your tower are going to take more damage than ones that are on the other side of the room. Uh, so they want us to create a construction site for a tower. And we're going to do that with code here. I copied that and I'm going to paste it into my console. And then we already have a builder creep that's going to go and build that tower for us. And even though this enemy creep can't damage us right now, uh, we are still able to attack it while we're in safe mode in our room. All right, so our builder has finished building our tower. And it says that towers use energy, so we need our harvester to take the energy that it harvests and drop it off at the tower uh, so that it can actually fire upon our enemies. So it wants us to add this code to the harvester uh, module so that it knows that you need to fill not only spawns and extensions, but also towers. So we'll go over to our harvester module replace all that code. And you can see in the find call where we're filtering our structures, it's going to be extensions, spawns, and towers. Commit that. And now our harvester is pathing over to the tower to fill it up with energy. So now our tower is built and it has energy in it, uh, but that doesn't mean it's gonna do anything this is uh, Screeps, if we've got to write code to do everything we want to do, including writing code to operate our tower. Um, so tower has three modes. It can attack enemy creeps, it can heal your own creeps, and it can also repair structures. So each action uh, spends 10 energy units, and then we use the attack on the closest enemy um, when we find one. So uh, I imagine that's what this code down here is going to do. Let's copy it over to main. 
And before we commit it, let's look at it. Okay, so we're getting a reference to our tower. Uh, and in this code here, it's getting that tower by the object ID. And that's this long string here. And to get any ID on any object in the game, you can select it and look over in the right hand panel. And right below this blue bar where it tells you what type of structure it is, um, there will be the ID. So even this creep, if I select it, it has an ID too. Everything uh, in the game, it has some sort of ID, uh, including like the source also has an ID. Uh, so getting objects by ID uh, can be useful uh, for certain applications. It's also a really fast function call. Um, so that's how they're getting the tower reference. And then if we have a tower built, or this tower, this exact tower built, uh, we then want to get a reference to the closest enemy. It's going to use this call, find closest by range. This is like our find call before, except instead of returning a list of objects, it's going to return uh, just one object and it's going to be the closest one. And what type of object do we want? We want hostile creeps. And so if we find one, then our tower is going to go ahead and attack it. Uh, and that's real simple, just tower.attack. And we pass in the thing we want to attack. So let's commit that and uh, watch this guy die. So you can see our tower is shooting it and it killed it. So the enemy creep is eliminated and our colony is now safe. But the invader damaged some of the walls um, during that period where it could attack us. Um, so we want to repair that damage. So you can repair damage with creeps. Um, you can also repair it with uh, towers. So they're giving us some code here so that our tower can repair the damage. So I copied it, pasting it into main, replacing everything that was there. Uh, so now it's going to look for damage structures first. And if it finds one, it's going to try to repair it. Um, and then below is the code to attack hostile creeps. And you can see we're making two calls on the tower within a single game loop. But the tower can only perform one of these actions. And I believe it's going to be the last action you tell uh, a tower or a creep to do that's actually going to happen. So in this case, if another hostile entered the room, it would attack it and uh, not repair during that tick. Let's commit this and watch it repair um, our wall. So the damage has been repaired and we have completed the tutorial. So now we have enough knowledge and code to start playing online. So choose your room, um, start your colony, and set out on your own quest to dominate the world of scrapes. Uh, and then it sends you over to the documentation, which I showed you in the first video of this series, but let's go back over to it uh, because it's gonna have lots of useful information. Uh, you're gonna be on this creeps article a lot. It tells you the different parts that you can add to your creep body. Uh, it's also gonna give you information about movement and damage. Let's see what else is important. It talks about defenses. So you've got that safe room option, but that's really a last resort. Uh, you've got walls that can help buy you some time if you are under attack. Uh, ramparts are like walls, uh, but your own creeps can pass through them. Uh, so they're a little bit nicer. They do take more energy to repair and upkeep them. And then of course, towers we just learned how to use. And then your creeps, you can build creeps that have different uh, attack parts. And those are really good at uh, defending your base, but the code is really complicated. So once you get there, uh, that, that'll be an ideal defense for your room. So yeah, I think that about covers it for um, this walkthrough of the Screeps tutorials. Uh, I hope you found it useful. And I guess this is the part where I try to sell you something. Um, I do coaching. I help programmers to learn how to code and get their first job in software development. So if you are a beginner programmer and you're looking for some help, uh, reach out to me. I'll have a link in the description uh, to my website. And of course, I also do custom development. I specialize in Django websites. So I'll have a link in the description for that too. Um, yeah, hope you have a good day. Hope you found this fun and I'll catch you later.